Okay guys, so I'm uh, super late to the party on the reviews on the Run Cam 5. This, this has been a heavily reviewed camera. I've actually had this for a while now. Um, uh, actually before I even went to my trip to, tri trip to China. And I've been using this and actually uh, liked it so much I picked up a second one. I have actually two of these now. And, uh, and it's the same size as the Session 5 that everyone likes. It fits all the same mounts. I have no issues with that. It is lighter. I'll give you the weight of the camera here in a second. But uh, the reason I like it so much is not necessarily for the 4K footage. It's okay for 4K footage in terms of the resolution, the image quality, and bitrate. Um, but mostly the thing that I like about the Runcam 5 is the 1440p resolution, which is actually um, a 4x3 image, but uses the full 4x3 image of the 4x3 sensor of this camera, just like the Hero Session 5. Now, however, it does come out as a 4.3 video instead of a 16.9 video, um, but you can stretch it out as you, you'll see here. I'll, I'll show you some footage uh, using that dynamic stretching that there has been sort of uh, shown around the internet, but no one has actually showed you how to do it. I'll, uh, um, well, I'll leave me some comments below, and I'm not going to actually show it to you in this video because of the various copyright strike issues, etc. That people have been telling me about, so I'm not going to be doing that, but you can see that it is pretty easy to do. Um, literally, it's like a little file, like a command line file. You, you run it and on, on the, the video, you get out of here, and then you get a dynamically stretched video that you can post anywhere. Um, and it looks like the uh, Session 5 video. And in fact, and you guys probably weren't even aware, and I like doing this to you guys, is I've been using footage from this already in a lot of videos and doing the dynamic stretching and no one has said anything about it not looking like GoPro footage which is another reason why I ended up buying another one because um, it's it, yeah it's a little bit extra work in post-processing but if you're already doing video editing anyway it's literally um, you know five five seconds extra work you let the computer do the uh, the video processing and then you get another file that you can then put into your video editor anyway again can't talk about that in this video but just trust me it's very easy to do um, and if you contact me on Patreon, I can give you some instructions offline, but not in this video, of course. Okay, just to uh, quickly go over the specs here. So the weight, of course, everyone wants to know, it's about 55 grams. And the hair section, I think, is about 73 grams. So it's about 22, 23 grams more. If it's all of the same mounts uh, that the Session 5 uh, goes into uh, you get a it does take uh, I think uh, 64 gigabyte micro SD cards. You do need a class 10 or better or a UH I think a UH1 or UH3 card uh, because if, if it's too slow then the bitrate on the 4K video will be an issue and I do recommend that you um, format it in the computer using uh, FAT32 and uh, I think it's an 8192 byte allocation size. I'll put the details down in the description on the exact uh, format that you want. But uh, in general, it shouldn't be too picky about this one. Like the Box 2 can be kind of picky, but this one generally can take a different variety of formats and it'll, it'll work most of the time if the speed of the card is fast enough. Now it's not waterproof here. As you can see, you can close the door here. There is a little reset button here in case something weird happens and you need to reset the camera. For example, if you want power on or power off, re you know, resetting that usually fixes it. I haven't had any problems with the two that I've had. Uh, knock on wood, so hopefully you'll just keep on working. There's a micro USB slot here, not a USB-C, uh, and you can see that there's no cover, so yeah, it's not waterproof. Um, in terms of the glass here, people breaking that, yeah, um, I've heard that people break it, and then there isn't any replacements that I'm available yet, or that I'm aware of yet, but um, I'm pretty sure Runcam will probably put them on their website at some point. The way you use it, you just along press the button here, and it'll power it on get three beeps you get a green light and to start recording you just press the button you get a beep and then you get a flashing green light that means it's recording press it again and it beeps and then the green light stops flashing it means it's stopped recording now in order to change the settings on here you do need to use the Runcam um, smartphone app and I'll put a link down in the description where you can get that in the Play Store and then here you have to obviously select the correct camera and we have Runcam 5 already selected. And then this is how you change your settings via a QR code. So here you would uh, say, for example, video quality, I like high. I turn loop recording off, but here's the resolution, I like 1440p. And then there's a variety of other ones. I, 
like 2.7K. If that was 60 frames per second, I'd use that in instead of the 1440p if it was 4.3, but it's not, so this is why I don't use that. 1440 is plenty of resolution for YouTube as long as you render the video in a high bit rate, which is probably what you guys haven't noticed. There's some other resolutions here, like XV, which is kind of a weird stretching uh, that's done within the camera to 16.9, but the 1440p at, in the 4.3 mode, this is the one that you want. This is the reason that I like this camera. So that's the, the, the mode I select, and then you can adjust your volume distortion correction, and then you hit apply, you get this QR code, and then this is the tricky thing about this camera. You have to, I think it's double double click the uh, button here and then the light will turn blue. So we'll just double click the button. And you see that it beeps and the light is blue now and it's waiting for you to point at the phone at the QR code. It's a little, this is a little temperamental. There it goes. So. Once it finally recognizes that QR code, it'll beep and then the light will turn green and those settings are now saved in the camera. So that is one of the downsides about the camera is you don't know what settings are in there until you set it or you have to remember what, what you had set last. Um, but it's pretty easy to just, you know, go back into the app, get the QR code and then just, you know, you gotta basically avoid the reflections off the screen to for the camera to see the QR code so, it's, so that the, the settings can be set in the camera. And then once uh, the light's green again, you can just press the button and start recording, and it will start recording in the new settings. To turn off the camera, you just long press the button, and then you hear some beeps, and then the light will turn off, and the camera is off. So it's pretty simple to operate. Uh, I just leave it in the 1440p setting. That's the only resolution I use for this camera for all my FPV flights. Anyway, so that's going to do it for this video. I did do a video on where you can get the Hero Session 5 on Amazon for like $150. And also uh, my question about whether or not the warranties will work on Amazon. I still got some really mixed results on that. Um, yeah, you could, you get the warranty, but whether or not, it, you know, at, at some point in the future you break it, you can utilize it. It seems like Square Trades better than Asurion. Uh, that's what the, that's what I'm kind of like getting from the comments on that video, but I'll link that video down below. You can watch that, and of course, you know, if you want to pick up some refurbished Hero Session 5s for $150, uh, I believe that those are still available as well. But for you know $99, and if you don't really care about the warranty or any of that stuff, you don't really crash too much or you have really good protection, you know, $99 is not too bad for the image quality you get from this camera. Um, and if you're willing to do the dynamic stretching to get the Super view pseudo super view video, then this is a really good value. So, I highly recommend you check it out. I think it's a pretty good camera. Anyway, guys, uh, here's some more flight footage, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.